There is nothing that Amy does that isn't done with genuine feeling and with robustness. One of her best nursing attributes is compassion for not only the patients but for their families. And they come first. No matter what else is going on in the unit, she will take care of her patients and other patients in the unit as well and be there available for everybody at any time. Every day that she comes to work, she's committed to doing the very best that she can. She is, well, certainly very compassionate about delivering appropriate care as well as alleviating pain and suffering and um, answering families' questions about everything that they need answered. And if she can't answer the questions, she tends to get the right people to be able to answer those questions. She focuses all her care around the patient. The pa it's, she practices patient-centered care. I try to take their mind off of being sick with just conversation. So they always are smiling. Yeah, it's a fun job. They feel comfortable with her and they're, and you know, she's often been in cases where she can diffuse a situation if it's been, somebody's been over emotional. She's very good at that kind of thing. Now, the problem with most of our patients is that they're on ventilators. They're not doing anything. They're not talking. You know, they're not the ones that are experiencing the emotional, psychological um, pains that tend to happen in a, in a significant illness, um, where the family around the patient is, and they're the ones that are lamenting and, and crying and confused and whatnot. When she sees that pain and suffering that the family's going through, she tries to alleviate it as much as possible. You do it for the family, you do it for others that you work with, and I just feel that um, you take care of the family and the patient. And to do that, you have to be the strong one. You have to show them support. And that um, making life decisions for others is very difficult. But um, as long as you love them and think about what they would want, um, they're to support them, whatever their decisions are, as far as end of life. Paul Jember was a patient here. He came into the ICU critically ill. He was terminally ill. His wife happened to be a patient in our TCU, which is our rehab department. So when her husband fell ill and was in the ICU, she wanted to come and visit him. The daughter shared with me that her mom was in the other building, the North Building, and that she hadn't seen him for a week, and that's the most they were apart in 63 years of marriage. So I asked how she was doing, and I called her nurse just to get a report on her and see if she was able to come over in a wheelchair and that I could take care of her here. You know, if they only if they would give me a set of the orders or maybe medicate her for her pain before she came over and that I would take care of her during the day so that she could be with her husband. But as the mother was there, her mother or the wife of the patient, she didn't want to leave. And so Amy took care of her. She fed her lunch. She got her pain medicines. She took her to the bathroom. The woman could not go to the bathroom by herself. She had to take her, walk her over there. She took care of not only the patient, but the patient's wife and the patient's daughter. He did not want to be on a ventilator, and he was not getting better. And the wife said he never would have wanted all these machines and tubes, but it's hard for me to leave and go back to my room knowing that you're making this kind of decision. And it became apparent that the wife did not want to leave the bedside. So she said, well, let's see what we can do to keep you there. But she said, you need your care too. Amy thought, well, would it be possible at all if we could have the two of them um, room together? So um, that's when we intervened and, um, and made that happen. I spoke with the manager in TCU and my manager, and we worked it out that they moved patients around. And once we took the tube out, we kept them comfortable, and they were together. The daughter was so amazed that somebody would care enough about her mother and father to try to get them to be together during their last moments of life that she was so appreciative. And for Amy, that was just something natural. She, was, she would have done that for anybody. She understands what it feels like to be a family member watching your loved one um, pass away and you want to do whatever you can for them and make them as comfortable as possible. I guess I think about how I would want to be treated. I try to be empathetic and uh, think if it was my parent or my husband, um, this is how I would want to be treated you know, with respect and individuality and to listen to them, what their real needs are. You're not gonna remember the machine or the medications, you're gonna remember the person that took that extra step to be nice. Back in 2000, my husband had a bad accident. I was called at work at the hospital and she was there, she took the phone call and she says, Judy, you need to talk to this gentleman on the phone. And they told me I had to go to Lutheran General Hospital. 
and I was just like shaking because I didn't know what had happened and they wouldn't tell me on the phone. So she drove me there. She stayed with me the whole time. She stayed with me all night. And I, everything was like a blur to me, you know, because she took control of all the family members that came. And I didn't, you know, a lot of stuff I wasn't really aware of what was going on. But she, she came and she, she was with me. She stayed the whole night with me until the next morning. I don't know why she does it. She just has that innate desire to do that type of um, caring. I think to myself that I'm someday maybe going to be in the same situation and how would I want to be treated. You know, I know it gets stressful at work, but I always say I'm standing here healthy, you know, and I'm not in the bed and I'm able to give them the love and compassion they deserve. And that's a gift for me to give to them.